for who you are. I bless your name for who you are. I worship you for you are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. And at the center with all God is you that I see. Despite whatever is happening in our world, despite what is happening in our country, in our homes, it is you that we see, God, and you are the one that will bring us out of all of this, oh God, and you are the one that is protecting us. Hallelujah. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see at the center, at the center of it all. It's you that I see. It's you that at the center, at the center of it all. It's you that I see, it's you that I see, at the center, at the center of it all.
the center, at the center of it all. It's you that I see. the center of it all. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. There is power. There is power in the name. Miracles happen in your name. As we lift our voice, as we stronger, stronger than the strongest. You are higher, higher than the highest. You are greater, greater than the greatest. You are bigger, bigger than the biggest. You are stronger, stronger than the strongest. You are higher, higher than the highest. You are greater,
lift a voice as we lift a voice in praise it's you that I see it's you that I see there is power there is power in your name As we lift the voice, as we lift the voice in praise, it's you that I see, it's you that I see. Hallelujah. This time when we dance and give God some praise in this place, you can feel free to dance in your home wherever you're viewing. You know, as we give God praise. Hallelujah. I'm going to dance and praise Him. It doesn't matter what comes my way. The greater one lives inside of me. His name is Jesus. I'm born a winner, more than victorious. I'm an heir to his kingdom. I am filled. I'm gonna dance. I'm gonna dance and praise him. It doesn't matter what comes my way. The greater one lives inside him. Born a winner, more than victorious. I'm an heir of his kingdom. Feel with, I'm gonna dance, I'm gonna dance and praise him. It doesn't matter what comes my way, the greater one lives in. What's his name? Born a winner, more than victorious. I'm an heir to His kingdom. I am filled with the Holy Ghost. I rejoice in Him. I rejoice in Him. I rejoice. I am more. I rejoice. The greater one lives. What's his name? His name is Jesus. I'm born a winner. More than victorious. I'm an heir. I am filled with. I rejoice. The greater one lives inside of me. His name is Jesus. I'm born more than victorious. I'm an heir. I'm an heir. I am filled with the Holy Ghost. No weapon. 
no weapon formed against me. The greater one lives His name, His name is Jesus. I'm born, I'm born. I am more than victorious. I'm an heir of this kingdom. I am filled with the Holy Ghost. No weapon, no weapon formed against. The greater one lives inside his name. His name is Jesus. I'm born a winner. I'm born a winner. More than victorious. I'm an heir of his kingdom. I am filled with so I rejoice. I rejoice. And those who have been, and I remember you can deposit your money in our account if you're not able to make it at church. Yes, so. I can come to the church. We open at 8 to 4 p.m. Monday to Friday. So. What are you turning to wine? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. There's none like you. Into the darkness you shine. 
out of the ashes will rise. There's no one like you. There's no one like you. Why don't you turn? Why don't you turn into wine? You open, open the eyes. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness, into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God is greater, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stay? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stay again? What could stay again? Our God is greater, our God is greater, our God is strong. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Our God. And if, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stay? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stay? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand again? What can stand? What can stand again? So what can stand again? What can stand? What can stand again? What can stand again? What can stand again? Indeed, our God is greater, our God is stronger. Heavenly Father, as we return thanks for the offering which our people have given. We say thank you, God, for giving us health and strength, God. And we pray that you will continually be with us and continue to help us to swim in the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God is so good. Amen. So welcome this morning. We are so delighted to be to be here, those of us who are here. And I thank you for being here. Our worship team, our musicians, our song. Song man or song boy or young man or whatever. And those from our multimedia department and our ushers, all the sexton. It's a team that usually make things happen here at Glad Tidings. Also, the head deacon. And uh, all the others who are joining us today here in St. Vincent and wherever, this is our new norm. And we hope that our new norm, we would learn from our old norms. And when we get back, when things become normal, we are hoping that we will not go back to the old norm. We would have learned some vital lessons. 
that will cause the church of Jesus Christ to be glorious. So let's pray. Father, we give you thanks for you are always God. In spite of our reality, for most of us we are isolated. For our own safety, we must practice social distancing. And Father, many of our businesses have been closed. Many have reduced their output. And most of our normal have been affected. But you remain the only unchanged. God, you are above all. You are the God of the living and the dead. You saw this from before the foundation of the earth was, na- was laid. And God, you are not the God who will change your plans. You are an eternal God with an eternal plan. So bless us together, God, as we seek out of this sanctuary to bring hope and to seek to make a difference in lives. We give you thanks now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And uh, we are in the post-resurrection period. And I take you to the book of St. John, chapter 20. We were in this very chapter some time ago. And there is something in this portion, John 20, verse 25 to 29, that struck me during this, the past week. So 25 to to 29 says, and this is the post-resurrection period. It's about eight days after the resurrection of Jesus. So the other disciples told him, marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hands into his side. And Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hands and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said uh, to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me. You have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And I would want to just share with you what impressed me in the text. And I will speak to us on the theme, our wounds can become visible sources of hope. Our wounds can become visible sources of hope. And I focus this morning on the scars on the body of Jesus. 
that was made by the nail prints and the spear that he got received into his side. Henry Nguyen once described a small Easter gathering at which the group spoke together about the resurrection, referring to the wounds which Jesus displayed to Thomas in John 20 and 27. One of them observed, it is such comfort to know that Jesus' wounds remain visible in his risen body. Our wounds are not taken away, but become visible sources of hope for others. And I don't know if this might have been your experience. But it never came home to me so forcefully, like last week. That Jesus rose from the dead with a resurrection body, glorified body. Yet, the wounds were still there. It's amazing. Resurrected, glorious body. But those scars from the nails were in his hands and his feet. And the wound was at his side that he received at the hands of the soldier. So my friends, the only man-made things in heaven are those scars in the hands of Jesus. The wounds in his feet and the wound in his side. The only man-made things in heaven still those wounds. Those of you who travel and visit strange countries or wherever, on vacation or whatever, business or whatever, sometimes you bring back a souvenir and Jesus, when he visited the planet Earth, he brought back as a souvenir the nails, the prints, the wounds from his, in his hands and feet and side. You know, sometimes based on your, on your, on your pocket, you may bring back something small. We say it is not the price, it is the thought. Something cheap, something temporal. But Jesus brought back something that will endure to all eternity. He brought back something priceless. The nails, the scars of the nails in his hands. And, and you and I reflecting on Easter... Would, uh, would know that crucifixion was then the most horrible death. Among the Romans, it was given to the worst of criminals. And Jesus, the innocent, paid for the guilty. The one who who had never sinned, <coughs> had never sinned, was given his life as a ransom for many. <coughs> the 
These days, you want out not to cough. <laughs> if the church was filled, people would be running outside. But that's okay. It's the, the, the dust of Easter and all of that. Yes. The only, only thing, man-made thing, that's amazing, that you will find in heaven are those scars of the nails on Jesus' feet and hands. And look, they will be there throughout eternity. And God is a God of purpose. Why, when he rose from the dead, God didn't just heal the scars completely. Mm -mm. He kept them there for a reason and for a purpose. And you know, you know the song that says, I shall know him. Amen. One of these days, you're going to see him. And how are you going to recognize him? By the nail prints in his hands. You know, the chorus that we used to sing, when his wounded arms. Amen. Amen. Touch mine, my Jesus, set me free, and, and, and the rest I don't know. Throughout eternity, there will be those scars on the body of Jesus. And, and if you don't believe me, then read Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 6. And the prophet spoke this prophetically and said, if someone asks, and this is prophecy about Jesus, what are these wounds on your body? They will answer. The wounds I was given at the house of my friends. So when we see Jesus one of these days, amen, we are going to still see the scars made by the nails when he hung on the cross. And just like Jesus, just like Jesus, sometimes, God will heal us and deliver us. But the scars and the wounds remain. They remain with us. So when you think of, think of a person who because of their choice and their sin, like so many, contracted an incurable disease. God will save their soul. But very often, you live with the scars of the choices that you've made. You live with things like gonorrhea, herpes. Not gonorrhea, herpes. Hepatitis and those kind of fellas. And HIV. The wounds remain as a reminder that God delivered you. But those scars are there. And you see, sometimes the wounds of life are not so much because of sin. Although sin scars, they leave awful scars 
that remind us of where God met us and where God has, is taking us. But like the wounds of Jesus and the wounds that many of you that are hearing this broadcast and you're carrying wounds, whatever be those wounds, those wounds might be a divorce. Those wounds might be a child outside of wedlock. Might be an injury that you, that you have to carry for the rest of your life because of recklessness. Our wounds are often not taken away but become visible sources of hope for others. You see, those wounds can, like Jesus, make us to make us have compassion. Jesus suffered, so Jesus knows, Jesus cares, Jesus understands. So you think Jesus doesn't understand what we are going through now? Do you think he doesn't care? He understands. He understands. Someone says, in love's service, only broken hearts will do. Only broken hearts. Yes, if you've had a broken heart, you have a story. You have a message. You have a ministry. You see, the wounds and the scars are saying that people have turned their scars into stars. And in the book of Job, Chapter 23 and verse 16. Remember, Job suffered innocently. He lost everything. Health, children, portfolio, whatever. But chapter 23 and 16 says, God maketh my heart soft, and the Almighty troubleth me. Job now, because he was broken, his heart was softened. So when you see the scars in the hands of Jesus, Jesus is saying, I have been there. I've been there. I've been there. And you dare not say to Jesus, Jesus, you don't understand. You have not been on the earth with corona. Mm -mm. He left heaven. And you think of the cross. But he turned the scars into a star. He understands. No wonder at the, at the graveside of Lazarus, it says, Jesus wept. No doubt, Jesus weeps with the countless thousands around the world that are mourning the countless thousands that mourn without a body and can't attend funerals. Jesus wept at the graveside of Lazarus. 
And when you read the gospel, it says that when he saw the crowd, they were like sheep without a shepherd. The Bible says he was moved with compassion because he have been there. He's been there. Look at it. Look at my hands. I have been there. I know it. Yes, those wounds in your life leave you with a, with a sense of compassion. A sense that you understand, I have been there. I know what you're going through. You see the word, the word compassion is a composite word of two Latin words. <clears throat> Com, meaning with. I am with. <clears throat> and uh, Pati meaning to suffer, to feel. So I am with you in whatever you are feeling at this time. I am with you because I've been there. I've been there. So here, don't worry. Don't worry if you've been wounded and you still carry the scars of your wound. You're better able to have compassion of those who go through this. And secondly, those wounds, wounds are a source, they are a, they're a correction, they're about correction. You see the thing about pain, pain has a purpose, has purpose in it. Pain has purpose. There is, there is pain in purpose. There is a correcting purpose in pain. Pain corrects. You remember how your child learned not to put their hands on the stove? You remember how you learned not to touch the hot iron? You remember how you learned a whole other thing? What taught you is that you did it. And my God, when you got... Oh my God, when that thing gives you one burn, it becomes an aversion. You look at it, you see, you see that? I will not touch it again. And those people who have been there and have been bitten by sin, if you go touch it again, man, you dunce, man. You're, you're really dunce. And here now, Look what Jesus said. Thomas, you have seen and you have believed. But blessed are those who have not seen and believed. Listen to me. I don't want to learn something, some experience. This experience is the greatest teacher, but it is one of the most expensive teacher you could find. Listen, I want to learn vicariously. I want to profit from others, their mistake. When I see the wounds that they have received from a certain behavior and thinking, listen, I don't want to repeat that. Learn from their scars. I say to young people, because a whole lot of young people now are confined. But I challenge you this morning, because many of you, listen, all that we have taught you, you will have to live by it. Because by and large, there is little gathering. And I say to you, listen, sin scars sin would leave you wounded learn from other people's mistake look at their scars and their wounds and let it be corrected I will not do that when you look at your parents and your, your mother your grandmother and you look at the mistakes that they have made. Listen to me. Avoid it. Like COVID-19. Run 
heal from it. The difference is COVID-19 is invisible, so you really don't know. So you treat everybody like they're carrying it. You understand? I treat you like you have it, and you must treat me like I have it. But in life, when you, when you have seen it, you have seen the scars and the hardship of your parents because they have made choices and made mistakes. And I see a whole lot of young people making the same mistake. Then the wounds are not corrective. Wounds must help you overcome. And that's what Isaiah says in Isaiah 53 and 5. He was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of his peace was upon him. And with his stripes I am healed. Hallelujah. I am healed. He bore it for me. I don't have to carry it. I don't have to carry it. Do not repeat the mistake of your past generation. If not, you're not learning. You're not bright. You're not, you're not profiting from the thing, man. Wounds, therefore, can be, can be sign of victory. Victory, man. And learn it. And I learned there are some things that just don't work. And so I don't have to repeat them to learn from them. So some, of, some of you have this magical thinking to say, well, it will never happen to me. You ever met people like that? And they get in trouble and you ask them, so you didn't know? And they say, well, I, yes, I see other people, but... For me, I, I just didn't know that it would happen to me. Well, you might be, you're, be, you're some special being, huh, son? You're some special being. Yes. So, friends, if you carry your wounds, your wounds can serve as correction for others. Yes. The nail prints in the hands and the feet of Jesus and that in his side can also be a comfort to us. A comfort. His wounds inspire us. So in our text, notice the words of Thomas. Once he saw those wounds in verse 28. Thomas answered and said, My Lord and my God. Robert Shula used to say, What is the cross? It is a minus turn into a plus. You could always turn your minuses into plus. Always. That's what this, the prince in the arms of Jesus is saying to you. Yes, that doesn't have to be a minus. The cross is about making minuses some plus. God can use them to catapult you. I read of a, a story of a priest in 1873. A priest named Joseph Daniel. He was sent to minister to a colony of lepers in one of the Hawaiian islands. But the lepers shunned him. 
No one responded to his ministry. After 12 years, Father Daniel decided to leave. But as he made his way to the docks to board a ship, he wrung his hand in despair. And as he did, he knew. So he had to return now to the colony. He couldn't leave. He's now a leper. When he returned to the, the, the leper colony, words of his disease spread. Hundreds gathered outside his hut, understanding his pain. But the biggest surprise was the following Sunday. As he arrived at the chapel, he found hundreds of worshippers there. By the time the service began, there were many more who were standing. Many gathered outside the chapel. His ministry became enormously successful. The reason, he was now one of them. He understood and empathized with them. He was a leper now. Wow. His own leprosy became the open door. The cross. His mission. Was turned from a minus to a plus. That's the cross. That's Easter. And listen to me. I believe. That for many of us. What is happening now. We think it's a minus. But God is going to turn it into some pluses for his honor and for his glory. The wounds on Jesus' body. And finally this morning, those wounds in our lives produce a greater sense of commitment. 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 You can turn your cross into a commission. A commitment to minister to others. Having gone through your situation. good friend of mine, and I think he was, when he was missionary to St. Vincent, was a good friend of this church, Donville and Phyllis Jones. Many of you would remember him. But they, they, they have a very powerful ministry to the hearing impaired. Powerful ministry to the hearing impaired. And how it all started it all started with their first daughter being hearing impaired. And out of that, out of their troubles, they turn it into triumph. And hundreds have been blessed by their ministry, but it came out of their misery, their scars. Their wounds now turn to ministry. I read another experience of a woman who lost her husband. And his death was so traumatic to her that every day she will go to the cemetery and weep for hours. Until one day, 
God put in her spirit an idea. Why not go minister to the, the many widows that will pass through the cemetery? And God healed her pain, took away her sorrow, and God now made her sorrow into a servant and gave her a graveside ministry. And from that day on, that woman will go to the cemetery not to weep over her husband who's dead and gone, but to support grieving widows in their pain. Your wounds, your wounds is often not taken away, but can become visible, visible sources of hope for other people. What's your wound? As you listen to me, what is your wound? And believe it or not, this coronavirus would leave many people with a lot of wounds. Already, we are hearing the statistics. Suicide is up. The consumption of pornography is up. Domestic violence in some of these big cities are up. It's going to leave with much wounds. Economically, listen, if work, if cities are shut down for a long period of time, think of what can happen. But God, the God who came from the grave with a resurrected body, a body. The door was closed. The disciples were meeting. And Jesus entered without entry at the door. But he bore in that resurrected perfect body the wounds and the scars. Visible signs and source of hope. Hope that all is not lost. All ain't lost. Your wounds can give you a greater sense of compassion. Can produce a deeper sense of commitment to your God. And I hope after Corona down, shut down churches and lock all of you out. And all you can come. That when he opens up, there will be a greater sense of commitment to your God. But whatever be, whatever be your wounds this morning, they can become sense of correction, sense of hope to other persons. Will you ask Jesus? To make you and to make, to make your wounds a source of hope today. So that someone can look at you and say, if you make it, if you having, pedicat, having lost your mother and father and having, as it were, been rescued in Georgia Valley and God could turn Things are wrong and cause you to become a man and a leading builder and employer in this society. If God can do that for you, God can do the same for others. Let your life be a source of hope around this time. God is able. God is able. Amen. 
God is able, more than able, more than able, even though you carry the scars and the wounds. God has a purpose in it. God can use it, even though he has healed you. I ask you, wherever you are and you are following me, I ask you to bow, bow before whatever. If you're there as a family, if you're there as an individual, bow before God. There is hope. 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 And I want my life to be a visible source of hope. So we ask for your blessings now, God. Let this word produce hope and life. In Jesus' name. Oh, God is greater. Oh, God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Oh, God is healer. Awesome in power. Oh, God. Oh, God. What are you turning to wine? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Not like you into the darkness, into the darkness to shine. Out of the ashes will rise. There's no one like you. There's none like you. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Oh, God is healer, awesome in power. Oh, God, oh, God, what are you turn? What are you turning to wine? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. It's not like you. Into the darkness to shine. Out of the ashes will rise. There's no one like you. None like you. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are high. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness, into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes will rise. There's no one like you. There's none like you. Our oh God is stronger, Lord, you are higher than any other. Our oh God is healer, awesome in power, our oh God. Our oh God is greater, our oh God is greater, our oh God is stronger, Lord, you are higher than any other. Our oh God is healer, awesome in power, our oh God. 
If our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stay in us? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stay in us? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stay in us? What can stand against? What can stand against? What can stand against? What can stand against? Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Awesome in power, our God. invite you to stand those of us who are here this morning our wounds are often not taken away but can become visible sources of hope to others lift up your heads Lift those shoulders that hang loosely at your side. There is hope in God. Hope in God. Your cross that you think is a minus God can turn them into a plus. Your scars can become your star. Let Jesus do that for you at this time. God, we bless your people wherever they are. Bless them. Keep them. God, we declare over their lives that no plague will come near their dwelling for a thousand will fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will meet your children, heal their bodies. We speak to diseases and we command them in Jesus' name to come out of those bodies now. We speak to persons, individuals, situation God that there are hundreds without work without a source of income and we ask you the Jehovah Jireh provide oh God for them thank you for doing it God we pray that this period of isolation and confinement will only bring us closer to you. Will only produce, God, a deeper sense of commitment to you. We thank you now. Thank you, Father, for giving us the ability to be able to broadcast this word to how many hundreds. God, we pray that this word will accomplish its purpose. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now and forever. Amen. So God bless you. We just want to remind you that every Wednesday... We join in warfare against COVID-19 in prayer and fasting. And please join us again. And next week in the will of the Lord, we hope to bring you another service out of the sanctuary of Glad Tidings Tabernacle. You be blessed. Good day. God bless you all.